Welcome to our final episode on SOE small arms development. Today we're going to be taking a look at the suppressed Sten variants. So the Sten gun is a very interesting submachine gun to look at from World War II history. And it's fascinating because it was very cheap, it was mass produced, there were over 4 million made. So the Sten gun was a blowback operated 32 round magazine submachine gun that had a wire stock on most of the variants and it had the magazine protruding from the left side of the gun and it had very rudimentary iron sights mounted as well. The ST stands for Major Shepard and Mr. Turpin who were two of the designers of the submachine gun and the EN comes from the factory in which it was developed which was the Enfield Arsenal. So there were about six major variants of the Sten gun. The Mark I was the original version. It had a wooden forend and even a collapsible grip and a spoon flash hider. The Mark II is probably the most famous and what you're looking at right now. It could be dismantled by unscrewing the barrel via a barrel nut. And then you could take the buttstock apart and you could actually put fit the weapon into a very small and very compact package. Notice on this Sten how the magazine release box can be turned around and actually be shifted all the way to the opposite side of the weapon when it's disassembled and dismantled. This is to try to keep as much debris outside of the Sten when in transit. And this was why it was favored by SOE because they could drop this and conceal this to resistance groups in Europe who then could put it back together and they'd have a fully functioning submachine gun in a package that was much easier to get across than a Thompson or even an MP40. The Mark III was the non-dismantable version of the Mark II, so you could not take the barrel out easily. And then the Mark IV was a paratrooper variant that never saw use. The Mark and the Mark V had a wooden buttstock, could mount a bayonet, and had a Lee Enfield front sight in addition to a foregrip. What we're focusing on today is just the Mark IIs and the Mark VI. So what you're looking at now is the Mark IIs. The S actually doesn't stand for silence or suppress. It actually stands for special purpose. The Mark IIs comes from various designs within SOE and within the Small Arms Group of Ministry and Supply Armaments Design Corporation. There are a number of people who had their hand in developing this then. However, before the Mark IIs, there's a certain Polish lieutenant named Kolinkowski who initially designed the first prototype. This prototype was very unwieldy as it had a long barrel that was 22 and a half inches long and was two inches in diameter. From initial testing between this design and various Thompsons that were outfitted with suppressors, it was found out that the Thompson suppressors ended up bursting after several hundred rounds while the Sten guns kept on chugging along. However, the problem with the Sten prototypes they had were that it was too heavy and too unwieldy for very much use in actual operational circumstances. Thus, after a long period of time of development and seeing things through, the Mark IIs was finally conceived and in a production variant, it was shipped over to various clandestine groups with SOE and with British forces in East Asia, in addition to resistance groups in Europe. The production version had various lightning cuts in the bolt, this was done because there were reliability issues with a standard issue Sten bolt with a suppressor mounted. Bear in mind the suppressor itself could be taken on and off via a sort of ratchet system, very similar to how other Mark IIs had their own barrels taken off as well. According to Folk Myrog with an article in Small Arms Review, the desire was to find a weapon precise and powerful enough that could kill a man within 50 yards. Night sights were required and the weapon should be repeating or self-loading. Apart from the aforementioned lightning cuts, one of the issues with the Sten was penetration and velocity, in that velocity actually went down as a result of putting the heavy suppressor on it. Now these suppressors used a series of baffles or various discs, and they kind of alternated between designs, some design using the discs, some or later designs doing using the baffles. On the flip side of that coin, the penetration of the Sten Mark IIs and the Mark VI's also went down. So in a report done by SOE on various suppressed British small arms, testing against that 30 caliber carbine that we saw in an earlier video and the 45 Delisle between the Mark IIs and the Mark VI. The, D the Delisle penetrated a steel plate at around 100 yards, the M1 carbine at around 10 to 15 yards, and the Sten Mark II from 15 to 25 yards depending on ammunition type. 
and then the Sten Mark VI suffered a number of failures but could penetrate a plate up to 25 yards, also depending on ammunition type. So while gaining the suppressor was a tactical advantage, various people who used it lost penetration and velocity while putting that suppressor on. When it comes to actual numbers of how many of these submachine guns were produced, we've got one figure of around 5,776 Mark II S's were made, and then we have another figure of 24,824 Mark VI S's were made. However, we must take caution with these statistics because it's very difficult to get a hold on especially the clandestine side of exactly how many were produced and how many suppressors were added to standard stands. In addition, we have another number in that the Braddock Auto Engine Company made around 12,500 suppressors for the Sten gun over the course of World War II. So the German military was actually very interested in the Mark II S as well, capturing the number during the war and giving it the name of MP751E. In fact, as pointed out by Matthew Moss on Historical Firearms, one of Germany's most famed commandos, Otto Skorzeny, had this quote to say about the Sten Mark II S. What splendid possibilities the use of these silencers offered. I thought enthusiastically what losses they might save and what dangers they might avert. How wonderful in case of an unexpected meeting with an enemy detachment to be able to fire without the reports attracting the attention of other enemy groups. I think this goes to show that the German officers really appreciated these suppressed submachine guns as they really didn't have much supply of suppressed submachine guns on their own, or at least they were in vast quantity. The final variant of the suppressed stands is the Mark VI variant. This was an improvement on the Mark V, which had the wooden stock, it had a wooden pistol grip and a wooden foregrip in addition to a bayonet lug, and also had a Lee Enfield front sight. The Mark VI was the exact same version as the Mark V, except the barrel assembly was unscrewed out and a suppressor was screwed back in. After World War II, the Sten armed various stay-behind units that were left in a number of European countries and whose mission was to wait for the Soviets to steamroll across Europe and then establish a resistance afterwards. In addition, the Sten found much use throughout the British military and various British clandestine services after World War II until its full replacement by various suppressed versions of the Sterling submachine gun. Thank you very much for tuning in with us today, guys. And as always, I would like to thank ProxyBid. They're a firearms auction site that is one of the prominent supporters of our channel today. And as you go forth and do awesome things, I would like to remind you to be very, very quiet.